Welcome to the Joy News channel. We are also live on Facebook, on YouTube, we are live as well. Also on myjoyonline.com, on Joy 99.7 FM, as well as a dozen affiliates across the country. Today, we have the rare opportunity to have a sit down with the running mate to the flag bearer of the 2020 general elections, Professor Nana Jane Opukwajiman. You know why uh, we are sitting today? Of course, there's been a lot of talk when it comes to education and there's none other than here to comment on all the issues that have come up regarding the education front. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Joy News channel. You're most welcome. Well, Thank you for having me. How do you do it? You still how do I glow do and everything. <laughs> like, I am just about 39 and I don't have that kind of glow. Oh, you have a lot of glow, so, but thanks for the compliment. But how do you do it? Mm. The same way you do it, yes. because you have a good too. <laughs> Thank you very much, and, no and I problem. hope you're doing well. Yes, I How's am. COVID treating you? Uh, oh. The whole COVID period and yeah. everything uh, has to be yeah. on the low and all that. That's exactly how you've put it. I mean, none of us saw this coming. And we just had to take the best care of ourselves and of others as we could. Mm. It's not always comfortable, but it's not always about your comfort. It's about your safety. Mm. And when it comes to your health and safety, you can't compromise. Okay. Um, well, uh, I, I'm, I've still been wondering, uh, since you took a, a break from the academia, do you still have your colleagues, your students, always asking when you're coming back and how you're still contributing to the academia? Actually, I didn't take a break as in moving completely away, okay. away from academia. In fact, my last uh, PhD student uh, submitted her final document in November and uh, before the elections, of course, uh, in the heat of winding up the campaign. But I was able to finish it for her. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to the defense uh, because I think she's done a, a good job and she should go through. Okay. So you, you never quite move yourself away from it. Education is in you and your education. Yeah, and uh, you know your department needs help and if you can offer the help, why not? No. You know, I don't teach as in taking folders to the lecture theatre because then the students will suffer. Mm. But if it's in terms of maybe looking over a program, giving you a view, assessing a paper, mm. there are many, many things we do uh, besides teaching. So mm -hmm. I've been active in that area. From where you sit though, and monitoring the education fund, I would first want us to talk about the impact of COVID on education. What would you say it is? Um, like many, many things in our lives, not only in Ghana, but everywhere, but especially in our case, the COVID exposed many things that perhaps we, we ought to have been taking care of. Mm. And one of them has to do with distance learning mm. because students couldn't go uh, into school anymore, do face-to-face -face learning. There had to be the structures for them to be able to learn on their own. Mm. And in our time, during the time of uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama in the ministry, we intensified um, self-learning. And we did that because we saw that there were many, many, many remedial schools around. We found out why that was the case, what subjects were posing a problem for the students, what they could do on their own. Mm. So we invested a lot in integrating IT into the learning process. We supplied over 40,000 computers, even more than that. Retrained teachers. Um, <laughs> remember they were distributing computers to schools. Mm -hmm. We put a halt on that um, because we posed the question, what exactly is in that computer? You know, so we ended up putting lesson plans, putting the syllabi, reading material, so many things on them. And I believe that um, if all these had been continued, then perhaps, you know, I, was just I mean, it wasn't, in, to yeah, it. it wasn't in anticipation of COVID, as I said, okay. nobody knew that. But the world was moving in that direction and we needed to bring our students along. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if students are going to learn on their own, it means they have to be very good readers. It means their literacy levels have to be high. So we also introduced the reading project mm -hmm to be able to raise the levels of literacy. Because you know you can put all the computers there, but if they cannot read on their own, if they cannot comprehend on their own, 
then it's just like a toy and that is not what we thought it should be. Mm. So in fact we went on to advance the, um, the eye campus into the eye box which is an offline uh, program and we developed this locally for me that was the excitement mm. because I remember when we started and we got all kinds of vibes from external sources so we can help you to do it and I've worked with the youth all the time you know mm. just give them the opportunity and you'll be surprised what they will do mm. so we said no I have all this IT certificates and IT programs are in this country <laughs> then really somebody can do something. Yeah. And it was completely locally developed. It was launched in one of our uh, new free SH, uh, no, new e-blocks okay. uh, by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. So that if a student goes to the computer lab, what is it for? He can't always go to learn about the mouse. Mm -hmm. After the mouse, how about the cats? <laughs> 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 so if the student, for example, had difficulty with, let's say, physics, or had difficulty with grammar or whatever, then the student can watch somebody who looks like the teacher, who speaks like the teacher, who is teaching that particular area of difficulty. Mm. And we determine the area of difficulty by working with Wayek. Okay. Let's take mathematics. Mm -hmm. Over the years, let's say the past 10 years, what are the areas that our students avoid? Mathematics. I do all the time. And even in the whole, <laughs> <laughs> on the whole paper, which area do Ghanaian students usually not gravitate towards? Where do they go? What are the marks? So that we can target the intervention. Mm. So targeting was very, very important for us. So we gave priority to that. So that let's say I'm in school A, um, I have an afternoon, or even if I go to the lab, I can make that lab respond to my needs. And not because I've just been to the lab and I'm back. Okay. You know, so that, that was some of the targeting that, that we were doing. Previously. And we think that if we have any difficulty of this nature, or even when students are on vacation, then they'll be able to learn on their own. Mm. Because if all these things are recorded, then if they have computers, they can just copy and then learn. But staying a, a, a little bit longer on uh, COVID and the impact on education, for instance, um, over the period when we're hit and uh, schools had to close and all that, from your monitoring, I'm sure you still have uh, your ears and eyes as on the education front. What would you say about the handling under this particular regime, at least, no, I, uh, I'd to like mitigate to, the impact? I'd like to believe you've done your own homework too mm -hmm. before getting here. Mm -hmm. So you have maybe more updated information than I would. Mm -hmm. Okay, so taking it from there, we can only hear from what the students are saying, what the parents are saying. And in order to make a pronouncement of this nature about whether people are handling things well or not, you also need to get the reports. Mm. You need to get the reviews. You need to get the evaluations. What are you getting? So what, what reviews are you getting? I don't have them. Okay. And therefore, going on to say that you know they should have done it this or that way mm. can be problematic for mm. me. But you being the journalist, mm -hmm. and you have the right to information and all of that, all these hurdles have We're been removed from your right path. Well, whatever the case. <laughs> so you can go to the ministry, mm -hmm. get the right information at the right time, and then help us, the public, to understand this is what is going but on. But since you're in touch with most students during that period, yeah, they didn't I, give you any No, no, being in touch with students mm. is not the same as getting the reports from the ministry. Okay. You see, because one person or two, and we get, we get, we get enough. Mm you know, to know that everything can be improved and that things should improve. Mm. Well, yes. so since we are moving away from COVID and the impact and all, there's one thing that is uh, topical at this point, at least I heard you talk about it over the period, during campaigning, before campaigning, as you were minister and all, this issue keeps on coming back, free SHS. But let's just put a hold on that <laughs> before I get to free SHS. Okay. We'll talk about primary, but at least let's graduate and then we'll come to free SHS since we are talking about impact on education and all. So far, at least in our interaction with teachers and all, parents, there are concerns about the new syllabus and textbooks for teachers, handbooks for teachers to teach these children at that level, even at the primary level. What kind of vibe are you picking? Uh, in terms of our handling 
of education at that level. Well, I'll say the same as you have picked. If the parents are complaining about textbooks, then that's what it is. Mm. If the students are saying there are no textbooks, then that's what it is. What could be the issue? Currently, I'm not in the ministry. Exactly. So it's very difficult to tell what exactly the issue is. Mm. But we all know we need textbooks. We all know we need to retrain teachers. We all know, you know, in terms of workshops and so on. Is that how it was done previously? That's what has been done all the time. Mm. So if it has stopped now, we need to know the rationale. If it's, that is if, then wh why is that the case? You know, why don't they have textbooks? What is the problem? You know, uh, is something else supposed to replace a textbook? What is it? Mm. And why is that thing replacing the textbook? So I think this question is better put. <laughs> but I'm sure you have concerns since you have known that course, ministry I mean, before. And to know that our children go to school seven weeks into the, uh, you know, the, the term and there are no textbooks and handbooks to teach them. Only seven weeks? More than seven More weeks than now, seven at weeks. least at the last count. You see, a lot of things we forget is about um, using time. Mm. If, for example, you have decided that the semester is 16 weeks, it means day one is as important as the last, the day. last day. So if the first week is for non-academic work, you've already lost a week, and that's a lot of time. Mm. Okay, and if it continues, as in lessons not starting on time or whatever the reason, then you keep losing time. Mm. That being the case, at the end of the semester, you may not have covered what has been planned for in the curriculum because when we plan the timetable we take the time you know, we allocate the time according to the length of the term mm. or according to the length of whatever that has been allocated for so if this is not happening and if uh, seven weeks into the uh, term as mm -hmm. you say mm -hmm. there are no books then it looks like you are losing half of the time but then you see a teacher can improvise okay. can innovate but if I'm innovating my own way and so are you and so are so many others, then we are doing things differently. Mm. We may not have synchronized. But if we all have this, the same starting point as in a textbook, then of course in your methodology, you can be as flexible as possible because the, gr the group of students in your hands may not be the same as mm, yeah. those in my hand. Mm. And even if I teach the same course every year, there'll be different crop of students coming and they all come with their own vibes. Mm. And therefore you adjust accordingly. Mm. But the fundamentals that you need to teach will have to be there mm. because the fundamentals have also been crafted along the syllabus mm. and the curriculum and the timetable. So you need to connect all those pieces. So if one is not there, it can create huge problems. And as you say, the parents are complaining yeah. and they will complain. Yeah. So we, we move now to the secondary level. Um, prior to the election, like I said, there was a lot of talk about it and it still won't go away because there are still concerns that people raise, even though uh, there have been a pushback as to some of the concerns that has been raised about it. But there was a key promise, at least in your manifesto, I heard you deliver it at uh, UPSC <laughs> that day, about a review. And they still talk about what kind of review really uh, the NDC was pushing. At least it was a campaigning period. So the campaigning is over. There's some time for serious talk about our education at that level. So what kind of review really was the NDC pushing for? The review was proposed by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. How was it interpreted? Mm -hmm. It was interpreted as, oh, he will cancel the free SHS. Mm -hmm. We are not in power now, you see, to have implemented that review. Mm. So those who said they, uh, he will cancel it, why are they now going through the back door to talk about review? Because we have not heard from the ministry itself saying we need a review. Then we would have demanded of the ministry to let us know the, the, the evaluation report of what has happened, to let us know their immediate thoughts about what needs to be done and then we can all come together to support. Mm. That has not happened. Mm. I've heard Charles, I've heard the Nagrat, the, Nagrat, the Bishops' Conference and so on. All of them asking for reviews. So the question may go to them, what exactly do they mean by the review? Mm. But let's put all of that aside. When we said review, what did it mean? No, the word review has nothing to do with cancellation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
and I don't think there's a time for us to define what a review is. We all know. Okay, so it means that you just have to look at what are you doing. Mm. We had built review into the progressively free. Because you can't just start off and feel you not see any difficulty. There won't be any challenge. So every time you need to step back and ask yourself, I've implemented this for one year. What has worked? What has not worked? Going forward, whatever that worked, how can I make it work better? Whatever didn't work, how, why didn't it work? What are the issues? How can I remove them? Okay, so with everything, even with our own lives, with everything else, you every time have to step back, do some introspection and see what it is. So coming to your question about the review, definitely, whatever people are complaining about now, they are not new, mm. okay? Because you are rolling out something on a very mass scale and therefore, Definitely there will be challenges. We were told there were teething problems. What were they? Are the teething problems persisting? We saw that the teething problems were persisting in terms of not just access, mm -hmm. but especially in terms of quality. When people talk about, oh, I'll give you access. No, access without quality is no education now at what all. What we hear is that quality has improved. They tell us to refer to the results that were churned out. Let me tell you, I'll, I'll say, refer to our record in four years. In four years, we topped WAIEC from 2012 to, to 16. Mm. We topped WAIEC in the whole of West Africa for the, th for the four consistent years. This exam that if you, or whoever is saying we should look at it, mm -hmm. did we hear of students being given external examiner's reports? Did we hear of students learning from past questions? Mm -hmm. Is it true that students didn't have textbooks? Did we hear of students saying, no, that's not what we were told would come in the exam? Not in one school, not in two schools. Too many schools to count, and that was very disturbing. So the same students who were making all this noise, saying unacceptable, directing unacceptable words at adults, now have A's. What am I supposed to believe? What am I supposed to believe? So were they just acting? So the students you believe were deliberately aided? I will not so go that into that. All I'm saying is that, you see, give I am putting the information out there. Mm. And it's not for me to conclude. Mm. If you have a class and the students are saying we don't have a te the textbooks, mm -hmm. the, student, the science students are saying we don't have reagents, we've never gone to the lab. We don't even know what the chemistry lab looks like. The chemistry teacher is saying the same. It's been two years, my students have never been to the lab. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you are told that student had an A. What would be your own conclusion? And you see this as such a serious matter. It is very serious because it is about the human development of your country. And those kids may not be working now, they'll work later. And the kind of preparation you give is very, very important. So if they are very happy that oh, they have, everybody has an A, that's their problem. Mm. But let us get serious. So then my question is, if all these things that happened were true, mm -hmm. how could everybody have an A? I'm, I'm also a teacher, and I'm happy everybody in my class has an A. But I know this A they must earn. They because they are not it. just getting the A for the fun of it. You know, when you go for an interview, they just look at your transcript. Nobody will talk about it anymore. And when you get the job, we don't care whether they had first class or not. Are you performing? Mm. And how you can perform or not perform depends on how well you learned. So these are very serious issues. But I've heard people say that it's not new for you to say that um, people have passed and that there should be a problem because what we do in our education system is actually to chew, pass and then forget. Anyone who says it doesn't that, go to the core of anyone who says that doesn't understand what education should be. Mm. What are you chewing? <laughs> and what are you pouring? And why are you pouring it? That's not what it is about. You you are being prepared for the world of work, and you need to take yourself seriously. If you are just it, you see, even when people talk about chewing and pouring, mm -hmm. sometimes it looks to me like they haven't quite understood what they are being taught. Because you, you are being taught something, so you use it. And that is where the innovation comes in. 
that is where the new ideas come because you are applying what you've been taught mm. so if you are just learning it as we say by heart then you haven't learned and uh, you haven't learned much and if people are doing that then we need to step back as educators and ask ourselves are our students really with us okay do they understand what we are teaching in what medium are we using you know is the medium right is the level is the pedagogy right is our assessments right mm. we should have known from the first assessment or so whether things are going well or not and if they are not going well, what should we do? Mm. What, what help give our students? And even as teachers, what help do we need in order to provide it to our students? Mm. So you cannot spend, what, how many years in school and then say you are going to chew and, and pour, then stay at home. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's been, what, five years <laughs> since uh, the implementation of this famous uh, free SHS. In the past few weeks, uh, like I said, there's been a lot of talk. We've been talking about the review uh, that uh, at least the NDC proposed. But there's been talk about the real challenges. But we've heard government officials, social media, there's talk that there's really no challenge. We've heard parents say that to complain about the food, they've complained about quality. But what we've been told is that these are not new challenges. They've been there from your time back to date even when you were uh, a minister and it will not go away today so why then do we associate it directly to the implementation of free shs infrastructure has always been an issue they say food has not been good in the boarding house you so have been very selective new? yourself mm. in the information you've picked social mm. media it's not everybody who is saying there's no problem Otherwise, this had government officials. Otherwise, this mm -hmm. interview would, would not have been necessary. You would mm -hmm. not have made this effort to find me mm -hmm. and for us to talk. So mm -hmm. let's face the facts. Mm -hmm. Yes, there have been problems. We know there's no perfect system anywhere. You know, a child goes to boarding school. Even adjustment is a problem. You know, boarding school food nobody likes it, and the room is this and the washroom because it's not your home. Mm -hmm. But it's also part of the learning process. I'm not saying it, I'm not explaining it away. So what you do is that you gradually move the problems away. Mm. You gradually solve the problems. But when you are implementing something that gives, um, that opens the doors wide, much as there's nothing wrong with that, because you must give your, the young people the opportunity to learn. But it's about the preparation. Have you prepared well? Have you anticipated some of the issues? Some of the questions or the challenges will only come at you mm. because you, you will not foresee everything. But a lot more are foreseeable. The promise was that all the, uh, the day schools were, go were going to be turned into boarding schools. Has that happened? Mm. If you know you are going to increase your intake, other things must increase too. The facilities must increase. Have they increased? Or are the parents lying? Are the children lying? That there's nothing. And the problems have been there. So we should live with them. So what's the point? What we left in our progressively free was a plan that worked. Because we did targeting. We'd, I mean, <laughs> parents are saying today they will pay. Did the parents say they wouldn't pay? It wasn't the parents who said they didn't want to pay. And it's not every parent who can pay. Some are saying they will pay. Some may try to pay. Some cannot pay at all. And it doesn't mean that those children should not go to school. So what we did was to target. We were building, the, we were building from the bottom up. Who are those who cannot pay? What is the problem? How can you help? Look at the data. And I believe you looked at it in preparation for this interview. And you will see that even with the free SH, many kids are not going. Mm. Why are they not going? So you know that it's beyond the fees. What else is the issue? So if you look at our progressively free plan, and I'm sure you studied it, you'll see that we removed every barrier that can stop that child from going. Even then, some were not going. It means we had not finished. Okay. You'll be surprised. It may be a pair of shoes. It may be the school bag. It can be the, the money to take the bus. But that is stopping that child. Of parents. It's not every parent who can afford it. Mm. Let, let, I mean, let's be serious. It's not every. Let's say I, I'm a petty trader. Mm -hmm. 
okay? Maybe they are not even my children. Or no, let's say they are my children. Mm. They're also my family members and so on mm. who are helping me. It's not that I don't want these children to go to school. I just cannot afford it. Does it mean those children mustn't have a chance? So these are the thoughts that informed our progressively free. So the, the backlash was, oh no, everybody will go, nobody will pay, regardless. So whether you are working or not, whether you are not working, whether you don't have enough, whether you have too much, wasn't it surprising? Oh, I didn't find it surprising that the Minister for Finance will say, I can pay for 10 people. There are many who can. We want to thank them and urge them to do more. There were churches who were stepping in, wanted them to do more because we knew that we didn't have a limitless uh, source of, of funding. Mm. And already there were very serious funding gaps in our education at every level. The data was there, very, very clear. And it's not about paying attention to only one section. But we are told now that there's no problem when it comes to financing. That's up to them. The if that's the case, why is anybody complaining? Mm. So are the people lying? Why are we having this interview? That's what we are told. That's what we are told? Yes. That's your problem if you believe that. Mm. If you believe there's no problem, and I believe you've been to the schools, you are the journalists. Mm -hmm. You've been to the schools, you've talked to the people. When we were doing our manifesto, we talked to the children. The journalists have come under Everybody, attack for highlighting all these issues. Uh, that yeah, the we teachers are came under it. attack, so mm. I'm surprised to see <laughs> Charles now. The teachers came under attack, the headmasters came under attack. What, problem was solved? what problems were solved? The headmaster leads the academic and management experience of the students mm. and of the staff. And if he's saying there are problems, you just sit and talk to them. That is all. So let me come back to your question mm -hmm. about what we meant by the review. First of all, was to open the space for people to speak. The Minister for Education is not running every school. Okay? The, the head teachers are. That's why you have chats. Mm -hmm. You need to find out from them, listen, this is what I've proposed. This is what I've done with the progressively free. Mm -hmm. How is it going? You are on the ground. Advise me. So that's one thing we're going to begin. So we're going to call for a national dialogue mm -hmm. of stakeholders. And for me, a major stakeholder is a student. They know they are at the butt of everything and they will tell you what is happening. And as an adult, you know what to take out as problems of adjustment. You also know what to take as problems that you should fix. Even adjustments can be made a little easier through counseling, through peer, you know, all types of counseling. You can do that. Mm. So we're going to have a national dialogue on the free SHS. What is working? Mm -hmm. What is not working? Are the complaints real? And, and you know, you are not going to pose those questions when you have not done your fundamental homework. Mm. So we talk to teachers, we talk to head teachers, we talk to students, we talk to the community where the children are hiring uh, rooms mm -hmm. to find out so they can solve the problem in a holistic manner. We have focused so much as a country on the dormitories and on the dining halls. Of course, these are fundamental food. I mean, without that, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. But it's also about the quality of tutoring. Mm -hmm. It's about time spent on tasks by the teacher and the student. If it's three months here and three months there, and we're told it was the best thing to happen to this country, no problem. Give us the evaluation. Give us your monitoring reports. Mm. Give us your reviews. Hopefully that doesn't mean cancel. Give us what it is that you have studied the past four years to inform the way forward. Okay, so we did our homework and that went into our manifesto and you can see there. That was why we did not start the free SHS the way this government had. We are doing it progressively free. You are studying the situation, you are reviewing what are the issues. Immediately nobody needs to tell you you need more schools. Because mm. all you need is to go to the data and find out. So of the children who read BC, what percentage passes? That's number one. Yeah. Out of those who pass, what percentage goes? Then find out from all the schools what are their spaces. They were all bursting at the seams to begin with. So the places were full. Mm -hmm. We expanded, under John Dramani Mahama, we expanded 125 schools. Okay, that's expansion. That is new, new buildings, assembly hall, whatever. 
library, science labs, and it's new. Then another 50 for renovation, serious ones. Okay. Then another 175 for quality improvement. So let's say the science lab is there already, mm -hmm. but what's inside? Okay. Okay. Is the equipment up to date and so on and so forth? Do they have a lab technician? Is he trained? These are very important things. If you say it's a technical school, they may have the workshop. And when you enter and there's a bench with a very tired, rusted something at the end of it, nobody needs to tell you that children are not learning much. You need to go and retool the place, all of which we did. Okay, so because then just to talk about the numbers would have been fanciful, but we didn't think that was enough. So we did all of that under GM, mm -hmm. okay? And that also, of course, to build new ones. You can only expand the existing ones so far. And if you put too many of the children of this age in one school, you are not helping the school management at all. Mm -hmm. So you need to cap it at some, some level. And the figures are there, okay, to cap it there. So when you say there are problems, of course, there are problems all the time. But, the pro but you don't solve one problem to create 20 more, which is exactly what is happening. Okay. I've heard one word uh, this week, bastardize. They say that <laughs> what we are doing is just to bastardize the policy, rather than mentioning that, of course, there are some good sides uh, to it as well, at least. A lot more students have had access to free education and secondary education, which otherwise they wouldn't have had previously. Is there anything going on? This is what every government has done. Mm. Listen, we have a youthful population. We have a very high birth rate. Take any primary school close to you mm -hmm. and ask the headmaster, how many students did you admit last, let's say the last five years, you'll see there's an increase. Mm. So many, many more people have access. But it is about ensuring that that access yields good results which is very, very important, and that should happen. So if the complaints that parents are making, uh, students are making, teachers, why were some teachers sacked? And what hurts me is that you can use transfer as punishment. You should never do that, because the children in the rural areas must go to school too. And if you are telling the teacher that by speaking out, I'm transferring you to a rural area, it means you are not serious about raising the quality of education among the rural area people from where we all came. We shouldn't just sit here and forget. We are supposed to be here to support and to make things better everywhere. Okay. So it shouldn't be trivialized into saying that oh, there are problems everywhere. There will be problems going forward too. Okay. I think, and, I think and the word support from you, uh, whilst we wrap up at this point, from a former minister the vice presidential candidate, so former minister to the other, at least uh, to the current minister. If we, you need to speak to him directly, Dr. Yaosie Duchum, in terms of rethinking and uh, reshaping the current free SHS policy as we have it now, what would it be? First of all, he must admit, he must come clean and say, I need help. We'll give the help. But if the reaction from government, that's quoting you, mm. that there's nothing wrong and everything is fine, I'd have no advice to give a person like that who doesn't need advice, okay? So if he admits there are problems, or if, if you, you can turn the question around and ask me, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm a teacher, not? so easy sometimes I do of that. Course. <laughs> and if you ask me, what would you have done if you had won the election mm. and you had this problem? Mm -hmm. Then I'll tell you something else, so you can do that. Okay. So if you had won the <laughs> election, I my own <laughs> that's question. okay. I may as well answer election, my own question. What would you have done differently? I think I made a few points at the beginning. First mm -hmm. of all, it's open the space for people to speak. Don't go in cowering anyone that if you speak, I'm, I'm transferring you. If you speak, I'm demoting you. If you speak, oh, that kind of harassment and attitude will not give you the results you need. You so that, that would have been the first go. Talk to them and see. You okay. heard Joy, you did the interviews. Mm. What did they say? Mm. Uh -huh. So you have the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> so so th that will have to go. You have to be willing to listen. You see, sometimes it's not 
always what you want to hear that people say because you are not everywhere. They are there and they are telling you these are the issues. Maybe they've said it in even in a way that's annoying. But you see, you can put that aside and listen to the content of the complaint. And it's your duty to go and fix it, you fix it. We have a double track. We're told the best thing to happen in this country. We know it is not. Where in the world is it done? They quoted California. Go and look at the data, look at the history, look at how it came about and the efforts they are making every year to get rid of it. Is that something we should bring into our country? And America is made up of over 50, country, over 50 states. If you rank education in America, the double track is not, it doesn't even uh, come. So the states that are doing well, the Eastern, some of them, why do, I mean, you've traveled outside, why don't you bring the best into your country? Especially, you see, we're talking about education. We forget we have a very good system. We do? We have a very good education system that has produced some of the best professionals any country will be proud of. It is the same system. I would like to bet that about over 90, maybe 95 percent of Ghanaians abroad who are now doing us proud, holding good positions, doing well, have the education in this country. So there's something, yes, with the problems, mm -hmm. but you don't compound them. You try to remove them. Okay. So if something is working that way, it doesn't mean every part is working. There are parts that are not working. You concentrate on them and you bring everybody up to steam. So if now we are screaming all over the place and the response is that there's nothing wrong, it means there's nothing to fix. So if we came, the first thing would have been to an admission that we have a problem. Nobody should be afraid to do that. Mm. It's an admission. Yes, I tried to do this. I had the best of intention. Now that's where I am. I need help. There's nothing wrong with that. But you need to get to that point. And then what do you do? What are the issues? Is it housing? Fortunately for this government, they are not the ones who had to conceive of the new schools. They were not the ones who had to do the drawings. They are not the ones who even had to do the sketches. They were not the ones who had to go looking for land. They were not the ones who had to write a proposal called the Secondary Education Improvement Project and go around seeking funding. We got funding from the world. They didn't even have to do any of this. And of course, the majority of the funding came from the ABSA, from the ABFA, from the government itself. Okay? They didn't have to do all of that. A lot of the schools had even been started. Mm. Some had been completed. Just go and complete what's there. And I'm not saying all the problems would have disappeared, but maybe we wouldn't have seen them on the scale that we are seeing them today. Mm. So we would have gone to complete those projects. We would have continued with training teachers. We would have continued by looking at the WIAC performance. Now you send everybody as A, so you don't need to improve on any subject. I mean, is it true? But we would have looked at the performance. We would have done a scientific study to see, okay, they are not passing maths. Mm -hmm. That's still not enough. Which areas do they do well in the paper? Which areas do they need to do well? As, I, as I've already mentioned. Mm -hmm. They would have gone there to provide the support that the teachers need, that the students need, and so on and so forth, to be able to do it. So these were, and, uh, and you know, this is not new, because that's what we were doing already. These were sound policies under uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama that were rolling up. Mm. But people rubbished it all and said, no, everybody will go for free. Yeah, of course, the free was attractive. I'm sure if you were to refund everybody's fees they've ever paid in this world, <laughs> they wouldn't say no, but at what cost? Okay. See, mm. what is the end result? So this is what we would have done. We would have studied the situation, we would have talked to parents, we would have talked to guardians, we would have talked to teachers, we would have talked to heads, and very importantly, we would have talked to the school management, as in the district directors and their staff, the regional directors and their staff, the people who supply the food, the cleaners, everybody matters. We said we'll be Arakamu. Everybody thinks. Mm. They are all connected in the spokes and they all know what is going on. Maybe if it's not done on a large scale, maybe I'm sure they are doing it 
and you know yeah you in, are sure in small groupings. yeah you are sure but all i'm saying all, all i'm telling you is what we would have done okay if we would have done it on regional basis we would have done it on district basis the details would have worked would have, out okay and a lot would have depended also on the kind of handing over notes we get mm -hmm. and on the kind of sometimes there's some information you may not have and so you look at what you have what is missing where should you go what should and then you get a comprehensive understanding of the real situation mm. you isolate the challenges and then having talked to people and you'll be amazed what what uh, solutions they'll all come yeah, with they'll come with and but we did that for the compre uh, for the progressively progressively free mm. and there was no cough okay well but from where you sit finally <laughs> are you sure that there is hope when it comes to education in Ghana if the people in charge are saying there are no problems then we have a very big problem Mm. Okay. I don't know what there is to hide. And if you admit you need help, there's nothing wrong with it. Okay. We're grateful. The, these problems were needless. They needn't have arisen in the first place. But they have. There are solutions to them. Wisdom never resides in the head of one person. Those who are at the receiving end of this constitutional provision called progressively free education, their experiences matter. The experiences of the parents matter. You'll be amazed the number of parents, the teachers who've come personally telling me all kinds of things. Mm. And then you tell them, but you have your board meetings. Why can't you say, no, madam, these days you don't talk. Education is a very important building block of democracy. Okay, perhaps it's one of the most important building blocks. And if at that level you can't talk, what kind of democracy are we practicing? Are the children in the schools supposed to believe that when you have difficulty, you don't talk? Mm. Is that what the teachers are supposed to do? So the teacher just sat back. But you see, when you are a teacher, it's, it is more than what you are teaching. Mm -hmm. Because you see, it's a different job from, let's say, I've been uh, another place, maybe wine, um, I don't know, putting um, taps on bottles. You are dealing with objects. Mm -hmm. But this one, you are dealing with people, it's like yeah. nursing, like health, you know. So it's a different relationship altogether. And if you can't speak and you can't be heard, and if the student cannot speak and be heard, then it's not democracy. Thank you. We appreciate your time. <laughs> That's the former education minister <laughs> and then also the running mate to John Romani Mahama in the 2020 elections. Professor Nana Jean Opukwajiman. Um, I'm not satisfied. I'm sure that another time we get to sit down again. What are you not satisfied uh, about? I'm hoping that we could talk more. Oh, you Thank said you the time so wasn't much. enough. <laughs> you wait. We'll have a whole day to talk about education That's at another okay. time. Thank okay? you so much. Thank yeah, you so thanks much. Thanks for, for your coming. Time. So you just heard the running mate to John Romani Mahama, Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman, in that interview, assessing uh, the debate on education amongst others. Well, today, the education minister, Dr. Yawase Educhum, at the information ministry today, addressed some of the pertinent issues that have been raised by the Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman, as well as others who have been commenting on the issues about education. I've also been posing a few questions. We can listen to the education minister. So I'm glad to hear the minister use the phrase, we are fixing the education system. <laughs> I have a few questions. Has there been any independent assessment of the free SHS program to provide government with data on what is going well and what must be improved? And also, how much exactly have we spent on the free SHS program since its inception? And what is the plan for the long-term funding of the scheme? And how soon will the double track end in all schools? And has the management of the free SHS now moved from the Jubilee House to the Ministry of Education? And if so, what is the role of the free SHS Secretariat? And I saw an extension of Wi-Fi to SHSs and tertiary. I would want to find, as one of the achievements, it came up on the screen. Please, which schools exactly? All right. And Mr. Minister, the question was whether know, you have your child ladies, ladies in the GES <laughs> system. That was the question. Okay. GES system. Is your child in the GES system? The first one has to do with... Uh,
classroom blocks, dormitories, libraries, among others, and infrastructure, basically. I heard the, the minister talk a lot about that. I was just watching a video from the Kofridia Secondary Technical School, and apparently there were a lot of problems there. I mean, some students looking at the bedding arrangement and all of that. What are we doing with the existing schools when it comes to infrastructure improvement? Secondly, so what is that, the infrastructure improvement plan yes, for the existing schools? Existing schools. Okay. Tied to that, schools under trees. Uh, Mr. Minister, you spoke about the continuum from basic, secondary, tertiary education, but I'm sure you're aware there are some 2,417 schools under trees. Where is this data uh, coming from? So, this is data that is available. I mean, no, no, data no, no, that no. the don't education worry. ministry what, what, is no, aware of. No, don't worry, don't worry. One thing we try to do is anytime we have data, we try to verify. Maybe this is World Bank data or GS data or something. Yes. So, so World Bank this data. is data from? World Bank data. World Bank data. Yes. That 2000. Well, I can't give you the specific year, but I know that it's. No, no, no I'm saying 2400 and something. 2417. So the World Bank and the says. Breakdown, the breakdown is, if I may, the okay. breakdown is. 261 being at the KG level, then there's 989 at the junior uh, high school level, and then 1,167 at the primary school level. Okay, so the I, World I Bank says there are 2,417 schools under trees. Yes, okay. I can give you further, you know, No, no, it's fine. we just want to understand the data. But so the World Bank to. says there's 2,417 schools under trees. Your question is, Yes, so my question is, as we're broadening the, the educational sector and all of that, bettering it, how are we catering for the schools under trees? What's the program? Okay. Okay, let me take the first one. Talk about my son. I, 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 I think politics have taken a new low. My son should never be part of the, my political career. And secondly, I don't have a son who is old enough to be in a senior high school. So suffice it to say that I have no further comment on that. My son is not old enough to be in a senior high school. We have the best senior high schools in this country in the public sector. So if somebody says his son is not going to the best senior high schools in this country, I don't know what, how that is news. My son is not old enough to be in a senior high school. Now let me move on. COVID-19 pandemic as a reason why we should somehow have a dialogue. I don't know what he wants the dialogue to be, but if the dialogue is about because of the COVID-19 and its impact, what should we do? Stop freezing your high school? I'm not getting it. If it's about paying, that is the reason why we should not even be talking about it, because the pandemic has hit people so hard. And if there's a government program that is ensuring that their children are going to school, what are we saying? Those who can afford are saying, remove the foundation from the poor. I don't, I, I don't want to think that that is what has been suggested, so I'll leave it there. Parents are suffering. The least we can do is to support them and ensure that their children have education just like our children. Kofodia Sektek, I hope the headmaster is listening and he will take the pictures of the mattresses and the beds that are coming to his school and put it on social media for the world to see. We, we are fixing it. We didn't know. Came to our attention. Get Fund came to our rescue. We are fixing it. Call the headmaster and find out what he has received to date. Anything that he needs will be received. So, when challenges come, what we do is to make sure we can fix those challenges. I'm going to check on the World Bank uh, website to see if we have 2,407, but I know there are schools that are in the trees. Five? Okay. VACO Trust Fund has committed to eliminate it on behalf of the government. We are very, very grateful to them. But also going ahead, as a ministry, we are looking at education planning seriously. Uh, schools under trees is a, is a symptom of poor planning. Why did we not know that that community needs a school and proactively put a school there? And just go and approve a school that is under tree. When you were sending the teachers there, didn't we see there were no classrooms? So it's an indictment against us, and we are going to do a better job next time not to look at the symptoms, but to really approach 
the challenge, the problem, that we as education ministry will have a more robust planning division that looks ahead of time to see the needs of our people and don't wait for a certain community to try to lift themselves by their bootstraps and start a school that has no classrooms. So I get it. And we are going to do something about it. But we are grateful to Avaco, Avaco Trust Fund for their commitment uh, to this. Some people claim, you see, this, this logic is very interesting. For those of us who had the, the fortune of studying logic and reasoning in high school, in the good old days of, uh, I, I think it was called general paper, there was something called logic. And people are trying as much as possible to prove that Fresnel High School is of poor quality. So even when the results is good, they have to find some way to attack the results and make the results bad so that it can prove their point. But that point cannot be proven. You say they don't learn anything. In education, there's something called instructional hours. In education, we don't look at instructional days, but hours. In the old regime, before double track and semester system, students had 1,080 hours in school. Today, as I speak with you, students have 1,130 hours in school every year. Which one is better? Oh, yes. I wish all my, I was in school with all my cousins and we're all on the same track like it's happening at Massey High School. I wish that was the case, but we have to take a leapfrogging strategy with double track and do what other countries have done, where you don't allow the schools to be empty when children are on the streets and they are selling dog chains and cannot have the opportunity for secondary education. So we're using international of double track or what is called year-round school. It's a leapfrogging strategy. It has been time tested. I've taught in the program in America, of all places where there's money. They use it in California and use it so well until they have the money to take it away and get students to go back a single track. That is what Nanado Danko Kufuwa looked at and said, you know what, if I can educate 400,000 more children, I'm going to use this system that is time tested around the world. Yes, sometimes the explanation of it may be a bit confusing, but it doesn't take away the benefit that this system is given to us as a country. And soon and very soon, schools will be back on single track so that cousins and friends will be on the same track and will forever be happy. The president has committed to that and he's doing that. Talk about infrastructure. 1.5 billion potentially available for school construction have seen buildings in schools across the country, basic schools and high schools. You go to Kumasi Secondary Technical School, Go and see construction ongoing there. Go to Accra Academy. Every school that you visit that is a double trial school is seeing massive infrastructural development in this country. You are the media. I love for you to go to one of the double trial schools and come back and say there's no school here. There's no building here. Massive infrastructure development expanding existing schools in addition to the new ones under construction. So when you talk about infrastructure, We've done a lot. And the president says he's committed to doing more. Wasi, suspected of poor quality, trying to make sure that you prove at all costs that quality of free senior high school is poor. The intervention that has been done, you have more hours of instruction. You have extra classes funded and paid for by the government. And as if that is not enough, when we took over the helm of affairs at the Ministry of Education, students didn't have court textbooks. Four court textbooks were procured for all senior high school students, as we are currently doing for primary schools. Publishers have been selected, books have been procured, will be distributed across the length and breadth of this country at the primary level for all schools. Yes, it delayed, but now it is being fixed their books will be going. The government did the same thing for, free, uh, for senior high schools. Go to any school, every student has four core textbooks. Elective books are also available through bookshops and through libraries for the student to check out. So when you do all this intervention, the outcome will be better. 
But for those who say the interventions were not done, they don't expect quality outcomes. So they will go at length to even accuse the venerable Waek with all its challenges. It's a major test institution in West Africa. Now they have processes that they use to ensure that if you cheat, you are caught. And then some people talk about students who reported cheating and were complaining. These students were so disappointed that what they thought was going to come on the exam didn't come. And in fact, in some places, they even demonstrated poor kids. Their questions didn't come. And they were so disappointed that they demonstrated. And then when the exams come and some students have done so well, you say, why did they do so well? Why were they complaining about the cheating? Why were they complaining about the leak exam that didn't come? The logic is not working. If they were so happy that the questions came, why would they demonstrate? They were disappointed. They didn't, those schools probably didn't do as well. But those who studied got it right, and the scores were better. Um, double track, uh, something said about gold track and, and green track, and the, I think that's something that uh, the Ghana Education Service will take up and speak with the headmistress of the school. Why fire will also provide a full list of schools. It was about 560 of them at the senior high school level. Uh, we have the list. We also uh, put it on the website for everybody to see and appreciate. Uh, my brother, Echo, Ghana Education Service gets annual reports from schools that give us an idea as to what is going well and what we need to improve upon. But I thought my friends in the media, this is what you do so well. When you go around and do your assessment, you tell us <laughs> what we are doing so well. And we have heard from some of you, like my, co my friend there who was saying, I want to commend the minister. And also I have some friends who say, I want to stop this minister from saying what he's saying. <laughs> so you know, we get some assessment from you. Um, but on a more serious note, assessments are done annually. I will get reports from the Ghana Education Service. Uh, the amount spent, thought I had my documents here. Uh, I have to, it's not here with me, but I have to put it on your platform. Very we have well. the total amount spent. It was all cataloged for me. I probably left it in the car. But we'll make sure that uh, you get that data on the website of the Ministry of Information and on their Facebook immediately after this because we have uh, the total amounts all tabulated. So that was the Education Minister, Dr. Yawasiedu Chun, today at the Information Ministry, briefing the media about issues when it comes to education and beyond what exactly uh, the plans are when it comes to education. That's it uh, for tonight's edition of The Probe here on the Joy News Channel. Also on Joy 99.7 FM. There's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. For our radio audience, A Walk with Jesus is up next. Please stay. Have a good evening.